Have you ever wondered what truths the Bhagavad Gita concealed within its sacred verses? The Bhagavad Gita, often known as the Gita, is a monumental 700-verse Hindu scripture, a significant chapter of the grand Indian epic, the Mahabharata. But it's more than just a text, it's a philosophical compass, interwoven profoundly within the intricate fabric of Hindu philosophy, shedding light on the enigma of life and the world beyond. Its verses capture the profound dialogue, Prince Arjuna and God Krishna, who illuminates his path as his charioteer. This conversation transcends the realm of mere words, unraveling a spiritual discourse on duty, righteousness, and the road to divine love. They encapsulate life's most profound secrets in the divine resonance of the Gita. As we venture today on a journey of enlightenment, we will reveal some of the unrevealed secrets buried within this timeless scripture. Secrets that have an immense potential to reshape understanding and perception. So, fasten your spiritual seatbelt. Get ready to voyage through the eternal wisdom of this ancient scripture. The Bhagavad Gita unravels the secret of duty, the essence of one's life. This ancient Hindu scripture, a dialogue between Prince Arjuna and the god Krishna, delves deep into the concept of Svadharma, or one's own duty. Svadharma is a profound concept, and it is rooted in the very of our existence. It is an individual's unique set of responsibilities and obligations, dictated by their nature, skills, and position in life. According to the Bhagavad Gita, each one of us has a specific Svadharma, a path that we are meant to walk, a duty that we are to fulfill. The Bhagavad Gita places enormous emphasis on the performance of Svadharma. Krishna advises Arjuna that it is better to do one's own duty imperfectly than to do another's duty perfectly. He suggests that one should not abandon their duty, even if it seems difficult or filled with hardship. However, the Bhagavad Gita goes beyond just the mere execution, Svadharma. It introduces a crucial element, that of detachment from the fruits of our actions. Krishna counsels Arjuna to perform his duty without any attachment to the results. This detachment, Krishna says, is the key to attaining peace and, in essence, the Bhagavad Gita encourages us to perform our duties with diligence and integrity but without any expectations or desires for rewards. This is a powerful lesson, one that could transform our approach to life. It teaches us to focus on our actions rather than the outcomes, to find fulfillment in the process itself rather than the end. So when we talk about the secret of duty in the Bhagavad Gita, it is not about what our duty is, but how we perform it. The secret lies in carrying out our responsibilities with sincerity and commitment, but without any attachment to the fruits of our actions. The secret here lies not in the duty itself, but in the execution devoid of selfish desires. This wisdom from the Bhagavad Gita, this secret of duty, has the power to guide us towards a more fulfilling and meaningful life. The Bhagavad Gita reveals the secret, the eternal soul, the Atman, a profound truth hidden within the heart of this ancient text. It's a concept that can be challenging to grasp, yet it's fundamental to understanding the Gita's message. The Atman, or the Eternal Soul, is a core tenet of many Eastern philosophies, and the Bhagavad Gita expounds upon this in a way that's both enlightening and profound. It teaches us that beneath the transient physical shell we call our body, there lies an eternal, indestructible essence, the Soul. The Atman is our true self, the eternal consciousness that experiences life through the medium of the physical body. The Gita elucidates that the Atman, the soul, is not born, nor does it ever die. It is beyond the reach of time and change. It's like a drop of water in the ocean. While the drop is discreet, it shares the ocean's qualities. Similar is the relationship between the individual soul and the universal consciousness. The Atman is not a fragment, but the whole. Not a part of the divine consciousness, but the divine itself. The Bhagavad Gita also teaches us that the soul is the observer, the witness of our experiences. It's the quiet voice within us that remains unchanged, regardless of the external circumstances. It's the core of our being that remains steady amidst the ever-changing panorama of life. Recognizing the Atman is a journey of self-discovery and self-realization. 
It's about peeling back the layers of our identity, stepping beyond the confines of the physical body, the mind and the ego to discover our true eternal self. It's about realizing that we are not the body that ages, the mind that wavers or the ego that seeks validation. We are the Atman, eternally peaceful, eternally knowledgeable and eternally blissful. This understanding of the Atman is transformative. It's a perspective that changes the way we view ourselves and the world around. It imparts a sense of peace, a sense of purpose and a sense of unity with the universe. In understanding the Atman, we uncover the secret of our own immortality. The Bhagavad Gita unfolds the secret of yoga, the path to union with the divine. Yoga, in its essence, is more than just physical postures. It's a spiritual journey uh, that leads to self-realization and union with the divine. In the Bhagavad Gita, four distinct types of yoga are mentioned. Karma Yoga, Pakti Yoga, Janana Yoga and Dhyana Yoga. Each offering a unique pathway to the same destination, union with the divine. Karma Yoga, the yoga of action, teaches us to perform our duties selflessly without attachment to the fruits of our actions. It is a path of selfless service where actions are performed not for personal gain but as an offering to the divine. Bhakti Yoga, the yoga of devotion, is a path of love and devotion towards a personal deity. It's about cultivating a deep personal relationship with the divine, surrendering to the divine's will and seeing the divine in all beings. Janana Yoga, the yoga of knowledge and wisdom, is a path of intellectual inquiry. It involves understanding the nature of reality, discerning the eternal self from the temporary physical body. It's about realizing that the true self is not the body or the mind, but the eternal soul, which one with the divine. Dhyana Yoga, the yoga of meditation, is about quieting the mind and achieving a state of deep, profound stillness. It's about focusing the mind on a single point, transcending the physical realm and experiencing the divine within. These paths of yoga, though different in approach, all lead to the same destination, self-realization and union with the divine. They provide us with a map, a guide to navigate our spiritual journey, helping us discover our true nature, our divine. Divine self. In the practice of yoga, we discover the secret pathway to divine unity. The Bhagavad Gita enlightens us with the secret of divine love, the ultimate form of devotion. This divine love, also known as bhakti in Sanskrit, plays a pivotal role in the spiritual journey as expounded in the timeless verses of Bhagavad Gita. The concept of bhakti is more than just a religious discipline. It's a profound, all-encompassing love directed towards the divine. It's a sentiment that transcends the physical realm, reaching into the depths of the spiritual world. It's an unconditional love, not motivated by desire or fear, but by pure devotion to the divine. The Bhagavad Gita emphasizes that this divine love is the most direct and accessible path to spiritual liberation. It's a path that does not discriminate based on social status, wealth or intellectual prowess. In this path, the only requirement is sincere, unwavering love and devotion to God. This divine love promotes a sense of unity and oneness with the divine. It's not about seeing God as a separate entity, but rather realizing the divine presence within oneself and in all beings. It's about dissolving the illusory boundaries of the self and merging with the divine consciousness. The Bhagavad Gita illustrates that through divine love, one can transcend the cycle of birth and death. It's a love so potent that it can liberate the soul from the shackles of earthly existence, leading it towards eternal. The power of divine love is such that it transforms the devotee. It purifies the heart, illuminates the mind, and engenders a deep sense of peace and contentment. It's through this transformation that one can experience the divine in all its glory. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, representing the divine, assures that those who are steadfast in their devotion, who love him with all their heart, will surely come to him. This assurance is a testament to the power of divine love, a force that can transport the soul from the realm of mortality to the realm of the eternal. In the embrace of divine love, 
we find the secret key to spiritual liberation. The Bhagavad Gita, a treasure chest of secrets, offers profound wisdom for life. We've journeyed together through its sacred verses, unveiling secrets that have the power to transform our understanding of ourselves and the world around us. We've discovered the secret of duty and understanding that each of us has a unique role in the grand tapestry of life. We've delved into the mystery of the eternal soul, a timeless essence that outlives our physical bodies. We've explored the secret of yoga, the path of union with the divine. And finally, we've reveled in the secret of divine love, a love that transcends all boundaries and limitations. Each of these secrets offers a key to unlock a deeper understanding of life and spirituality. They invite us to view our existence from a broader perspective, to embrace our roles with duty and love, and to seek union with the divine. As we close the book of Bhagavad Gita, we open the door to a deeper, more enlightened existence.